this Monday night. Uh, welcome along, everybody, to the Monday Night Club, or whatever we call it, the Monday Night Show, the Monday Night on the Talking Cop, Monday, Monday evening, Monday, having a laugh with Gav. <laughs> having a laugh with Gav. I forgot to put fucking sugar in me tea. Oh, the, I I'm, down to ha- I'm down to half a sugar, because I'm trying to lose weight in me tea. That's the point. Because <laughs> I can still taste it. And now I can't. Oh, I'm upset. Yeah, sweetener. There's a, there's a leaf. I have a leaf in my herb garden here. No, them, them candrel and all, they're all fucking shit. No, this isn't candrel. You this just is leave a, a froth on the top of the tea. I have a leaf just here, in the bush just here. And it's right. actually a sweetener. You use it in, in uh, cocktails, etc. Okay. Right. How about right. taste like sugar? You can drop over the week. Yeah, drop over the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, good evening, all. You can see there's only two of us to me. Um, we don't have a third man. Uh, Pete's not available. And nobody else likes me. So that's basically it, right? So it's just me and Gav. Gav is the only one that still talks to me at this stage. Uh, before yeah. I start the show. And you're the only one that talks to me. So that's good. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's just the bills that's left. Um, yeah. Sport all over the world. That's what it is. It's football, football in the world show, says Garmack. Football, yeah. <laughs> football could be. in the world. Yeah, it could be. Could be football in the world. Best show ever that was ever on, on, the, on the show, ever. The mm-hmm. history. Yeah. Oh, really called. Um. See, we, we called the football in the world, didn't we? Um, I yeah. called the football in the world, had a different yeah, name. Yeah, you wanted it, but it was called, um, oh, it's there somewhere, can't remember. There you uh, go. But it was yeah. the best intro of all time ever. It was definitely fact. Yeah. Fact. Um, anyway, good evening, lads. It's great to have you all along. Um, we've got loads to talk about tonight. Uh, there's obviously the match, and I'm saying air too much, I need to knock that on the head. The is the match that took place yesterday. I'm not going to talk about us getting beaten 9 1, the under 18s getting beaten 9 1 on Saturday. That wasn't a good omen to what was going to happen on Sunday. Um, boy, you know, oh, there's uh, a big reason for that, you see. Of course, there's, there's always reasons, right? Well, you it's, see, the thing is, is because a lot of the under 18s that play for Liverpool are actually filling in in the under 23s because the 20, a lot of the 23s have been taken to train with the force team. So there's That's a it. load of the 18s are actually missing from the 18s. I think there's a lot of 16 year 15 year olds. Go man, Tam Boland, man on. Football. The man on football show. Yeah, that's what it was. Football in the world. It was a football much better in, name. It's a was it football in the world? Oh, yeah, it, it was. was yeah. yeah. Move on. There's too many things going on. Right, right. We're going to have a chat about what went on at the weekend. We're going to have a chat about Joe Kinnear and characters in football or the lack thereof. And um, James asked me, do I care? Depends. Depends. We have to see people getting very righty about me not caring about things last week, particularly on the Erling Haaland ha- chat. Not really well. Being yeah, on. and I was really in, embedded in that. And so was Kevin. You were sitting there going, don't fucking care. <laughs> and uh, the best bit was, I love those comments because it means that I got you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And do you know, I was thinking of you last night because we were, do- we're at the end of the show, we were doing the one... Um, we ask a question. Well, we, when I say we ask it every week, we we forgot about it for weeks and weeks. But we brought it back last night, where we, it's basically called the one. So last night it was the one character from TV or right. film that you would bring back. Um, you know, not even not even bring back a show, just bring back a character. But we got talking about. Um, Shawnee was telling us about um a radio show, um that Eamon Dun. Oh, it was um it was a radio show, and Eamon Dunphy was on it, and he was talking about it was an Ireland manager about to be sacked. And um, it was, he, Sean was like, it's the best thing he's ever fucking heard. Dunphy has them all on strings. Dermot Morgan comes on the line and everything. And um, it's absolutely off the chain. So I must get you that clip and send it to you. I was, I, I thought about it last night and then I forgot it. I love Dunphy. Best man. Best man. He's best amazing. man. Best man. Amazing. That was produced in this country ever. To, to, <laughs> he roiled so many people up. It was yeah. beyond beyond yeah. uh, belief and you can't even you can't even see it, it you can't even see a thing about rod little anymore without going well yeah uh, don't be no. Do you know who he is, Bill? Do you know who he is, Bill? Do you know who Rod that little, Rod little character is? I'll tell you who Rod Little is. <laughs> He's fucking great. <laughs> we were talking about loads of them last night, but um, that one that one stuck me, and I said, I better send Phil that clip, so I will find it, and I Do, will send it to you. A character I'd like to bring back, fictional or just... Yeah, like, there was there was shouts for, like, um, there, were, there was shouts for, like, people from, like, fucking, like, Bella from Fair City. Um uh. And then, Harry, and then, when we Harry mentioned Fair, when, when we mentioned Fair City, <laughs> fucking Emmett proceeded to tell us that he used to be an extra in Fair City, and he got sixty five quid a day on a Tuesday and a Thursday, and we took the Mick out of him there. Um, so yeah, no, it was just um, it was yeah, it was good. But, uh, but that one about Dunphy, just uh, I'll, I'll find it on my phone now and I'll send it on to you. It's great. 
that's great. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. That's great stuff. Right, um, I, I'm seeing people offering me congratulations. I don't like, I don't like bigging myself up. Uh, but I did do my event in Storm Kathleen, Gavin, as it was Storm okay. Kathleen on on Saturday. Yeah, um, sure they can I know, yeah. It's like it's that's like literally if Dermot Morgan and wanted to invent the storm in Father Ted, he would have called on the storm oh, Catelyn. Catelyn. Yeah, it's fucking desperate now. So f- phenomenal. Um we, So so it, before you do it, it was in Glendalock. What was Glendalock. the time you wanted to achieve? So I was hoping with, with if you the, had the mountain bit you wanted a time and without the mountain bit. So did the mountain yeah. bit go ahead? So the mountain bit couldn't go ahead um, because of you'd fall off the mountain. So no, we still did the mountain, we just didn't summit the top of the mountain. Do you because know you I mean? just fell off the mountain. You basically would have been blown off the mountain. Right? Carly so, would have been blown you at the top of the mountain. Yeah. So blown last year off, I did it in yeah. <laughs> last year I did it in two hours and forty nine minutes and eleven seconds, right? I finished um seventy fourth out okay. of six hundred people, right? Nice. Uh, and I finished twenty ninth in the over forties category, right? Yeah. So this year now they didn't take uh, they took the kayak section out because it was too dangerous for the, to kayak on Glendalock Lake because of the breeze that was there, right? So I managed, though, without the kayak section, to do it in two hours and 30 minutes. So I knocked 19 minutes off my time from last nice. year. Right? Um, As you get older, I, you're getting better. That's, yeah, I finished 31st overall and 13th in the over 40s. So to be fair, to be fair. I was delighted with that, um, and I was—I I didn't think I was going to do as well, and I managed to get in. And the best bit was Matthew, who's been on here, as, as anyone of the members know, he was there to present the medal uh, to me at the finish line, yeah. and he was there as my little helper all the way. So great lad, um, and it was great to have him along for the day. The, even though I had to ring him on the second run, which was the 12k run, and he, um, I said, "What are you doing?" He says, "Oh, I've just fallen asleep in the car." <laughs> <laughs> So he wasn't in any hotels uh, blagging a fucking no, breakfast. This, this time, okay, this, well, he did blag something because he is like, he's he's becoming the ultimate blagger, right? So you get, um, and everyone that takes part in them gets free hoodies, right? Right. Um, and uh, yeah, <coughs> Matty, got, Matty went up to them and said to them, oh, look, my dad, he's, he's gone out to do the race, but if you got to get his hoodie, I, I just came up to get it. Is, is that all right? And they said, yeah. That's no water town. What size does he want? And he goes, he wants a small. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. And he said, we don't have any smalls left. We'll take a medium. So take a medium. So that's grand. And then, so he's like, that's the, I'm delighted with that. So he went over there and he helped himself to a trucker duty, tr- a trucker hat, right? Yeah. And a key ring for himself. And, uh, but he paid for them. So I was there, oh, fair play to you there. That's, that's thinking. And I'm, I don't promote like, um, make up stuff, but fair play to having the nerve to go up and do it. Um, I said, How much that hat cost? 25 euro. How much that key ring cost? Another 15 euro. I said, How would you pay for that? He said, Well, Dad, you left me the wallet, so I just took your card. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Christ, he's just clearing you out. So all you're doing is running around the place, he's just fucking clearing you out. Clearing the bank, clearing nice. it out completely, right? So, uh, anyway, he's gone off to Wales. He went off to Wales this morning. Um, on a school trip, so he's gone off. Oh, nice! Yep, yeah, um, I'll have to get him on and ask him how that went. Yeah, yeah, we'll have him on. So Tell me this: what date was Easter this year? Was it the thirty fourth of March? No. Yes. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was because the fourth of April was it was Easter Monday. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, because someone in the chat there has asked about the uh, <coughs> the Bosco video um did i stick with the telegram group and i hadn't but i'm going to now um so there we go right all that talk but just to finish off lads if, i want to just thank everyone so far who's donated because we're nearly up to 1500 quid right nice. and uh, on my instagram i've also opened up a second way to donate money as well because it was getting too complicated so i say here's the link and here's this and here's that right you can just go straight into the instagram page and donate there as well so i've done all that to make it simple because people were giving out to me that they weren't doing right so we've got two sides going um and yeah, so I'm absolutely delighted, and we're we're um we're almost at 1500 quid. The aim is to get this up to two and a half by the time I do this 200k cycle in on June the ninth, right? So we've got eight weeks, nine weeks, mm, yeah, so, eight, yeah. So I'm just letting, uh, everyone knows I love cycling because I talk about enough here, right? But I've never cycled for than 50k, so I'm just putting that out there, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so instead of going, I might try 60. You've gone, I'll do 200. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you're, you're uh, a belligerent fucker, so you'll be like, yo, I'm not fucking stopping till I do it. You know what I mean? 
Well, do you know what's worse, right? So, and, and, and then I'll shut up again on the top of football. Do you know what's worse? Uh, I've already calculated what average speed I need to maintain to do it in under eight hours, right? So, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to... Remember, I'm hoping to do it at nine and a half, right? But I'm now starting to sit, I'm starting to think to myself, I think I can do this in under eight hours. <laughs> so you think you can do it under eight hours? I shouldn't be saying that out loud because this is just... 200, 200 kilometers, so that's 25 yeah. kilometers an hour you need to go. Yeah. To clear which is, eight hours. Which, is, which, yeah, which sounds relatively easy if you're in a car. But, yeah. right? But it's, not, it's on a bike oh, and it's up and down hill and it's... There's three thousand two hundred meters of climbing involved. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's what slows down. And the, the first fifty-five is basically just a solid climb from the start to when you get out um, into Blessington. So I have to cycle over from Bray all the way across the back of the mountains and all the way up to Blessington out yeah. through Sandy Gap. So yeah. yeah, it should be grand. I'm, anyway, look, right. So you, I've let you in the secret time that I'm gaming for. Right? I'm going to tell you on here all along. Yeah, what nine and what, what? What's my actual time? Yeah, what do you think you can do with it? Come on, go big, go big here, go big okay. or go home. Okay, I'll, I'll go big if everything goes right in the day. I'm hoping to do this in seven three quarter hours. Wow, okay, seven hours, seven hours 45 minutes. You've heard it here first. That's a bold statement, but we leave That's it bold. at that. Um, right. Maybe if you had a magic helmet, it's actually healthy. You need fucking afterburners on <laughs> the fucking. You need an exhaust on the back of the bike. For fuck's sake. You need a Honda <laughs> 50 engine strapped to the fucking saddle, just in case. If I, if I do that, you'll see me in in, in a pro team next year. But on, on box is there. I hope you have a comfortable saddle. Like seriously, sitting down and pedaling for two hundred kilometers for seven hours forty five minutes. Like you have to get off that bike numb. Um, yeah. Or like I presume there's padding on the saddle. I presume there's padding in your bottoms no, as well. It's not actually the more padding on the saddle, the more uncomfortable it gets. I'm not even messing about this. Really? Right? There's only about that much padding on my saddle, and then the rest right. is all in the shorts that I wear. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll keep us toasted as they're going on this weekend. It's 75k. So if we get up to 75, we a new world record for me. Right. Yeah, new world record. <laughs> Beyond the news. <laughs> New world record there from Phil Casey, who's just cycled 75k. No one else has ever Phil. done it. Oh, there you Phil. go. That'd be amazing, people. actually, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be amazing if you went down to, like, you know, the cycling thing? The, the, there's probably a cycling yoga rings or in UCD or something. And you just went down there and you brought a couple of cameras down and you've done, like, a broadcast. There you go. Yeah, no, world record there, cycled 75k. And people are like, I'm nearly sure people... No, they haven't. What are you talking about? And you're like... No, but oh, I don't like, see it. Where, where, where have you seen someone's done seventy five k before? Clearly, I've just said, I've just I've, said I've, a world record. World record for it. Yeah, yeah. Ever it's like that fella. Remember, he found the, the 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 hole on the beach earlier on this year, and he thought it was a yeah. meteorite. Right and meteor it was right like, oh, this brick and all, and he was going to get it tested. Turned out it was two fellas just digging a hole on the beach the day before. Video them. <laughs> 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 all right. Right, come on, right. seventeen That's minutes it. in football. Let's, let's 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 get it on. Um, yeah, I think for me anyway, so many talking points that came out of the game yesterday. But the biggest piece for me has been more so the reaction to Quanta, the mistake, and our overall t- conversation, even to Klopp himself, t- like said, look, these lads have got us to seventy-one points. But look across the team, I like. The more you think about this team, the more you look at it. You've got Bradley, you've got Kelleher, you've got Quanza, you've got Harvey Eddie playing a monstrous role in this. You've got Nunes, who's not actually that old in, in, in real terms to what's going on there. And even in the midfield themselves, you've got Zabozaloy, who isn't that old either. Like, Gav, from my point of view, the kid, younger players make mistakes at, at various different points. And the Quanza mistake isn't even... <laughs> Like yeah, it nearly happens in force. But like, it's to me, it's 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 a mad one because your man Fernandez hits a shot from about four hundred yards out. Like, do you know what I mean? It's not like that he was he, he rolled it across the front of a six yard box into his feet. Yeah. Kelleher's outside his box. If he's not outside his box, he's probably just walking back and catching that ball because that's all that's all it really yeah. was. Um, and and I, I I just think I think for for me for me we're not being fair to these kids because we shouldn't be where we are. And I'll, I'll argue, to, I'll argue to my death that we shouldn't be where we are, given the the injuries and everything else that's going on. 
we've had ridiculous continuity provided by fellas that haven't even kicked the football for the first team in anger for for most of the season. Bradley and Quanza are fines, and they're not even fines. They they are incredible first team players. We've been missing Trent for what feels like an eternity. We, you know, Canate has been in and out, and it's not that he's putting Gomez back in to play alongside Van Dijk when when anything happens. And even when Canate is fit, he's now putting Quant in because he believes that this fella is essentially the right-sided Virgil van Dijk in the making. Like, we should be celebrating these fellas. We should be celebrating them. And we should be celebrating their mentality and what they're doing. And I'm delighted. Like, I, I, I cannot understand the criticism he's getting. And I can't understand people being annoyed with him. This is the style of football we've been playing all season. Eventually, eventually a mistake happens. It's just unfortunate that it happens at United. Yeah, look, um, first of all, like, it is a mistake. Let's be honest. Let's 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 call a spade a spade. It's a mistake. He turns around and he kind of plays it a bit blind to where, you mm. know, Virgil Van Dijk had been for the previous fifty minutes. You know, it was literally we when we were recycling, he was turning and playing the Van Dijk, and Van Dijk was playing the Robertson, and we were going there a lot of the time. And then it might come back across and go Bradley and stuff like that. It is a mistake. I think what he should have done was he should have played what was in front of him and possibly went back to Kelleher because Keller is a like Keller's only twenty five yards away, from him, and Kelleher probably yeah. gets that. And pops it to Van Dijk anyway. It goes a bit ahead of Van Dijk. Van Dijk is kind of, oh, fuck. And Fernandez just, Fernandez knows he's not going to run these two boys. And they've hadn't had a sniff all day, so he hits it. Um, and it goes in. Yeah, it goes in. And look, we had fucking conversation after conversation last night about it. You know, it wasn't, it, it was, I thought it was a good performance from Liverpool, bar the finishing. Um, I think if we, I, I honestly think if we take one more chance in the first, first half, I think we win out probably three or four in that game that's just me um and people will disagree maybe but i thought overall we're you know restricting united to nothing really because they couldn't even do when they were trying to counter attack we were snuffing it out very well um but on jarell and, and and this extends beyond liverpool by the way i agree with you like when the season starts you know me i'm you know me phil i'm like we can win the league mm. you know we can win the league yeah. Um, but when you look at the upheaval, that, and we've gone over this millions of times, when you look at the upheaval at the club last summer, we'd finished dis- disappointing fifth. We're looking at Europa League. Who can we attract? You know, there's players leaving because of contracts that would, uh, are out. You've got players that are sold in Henderson and Fabinho, who a lot of people thought would be there. And we bring these players in, and people are like, who the fuck is Endo? Sobosloy looks a great sign. McAllister looks a great sign. And Gravenberch, you know, oh, didn't have a great time at Bayern. So there was an awful lot of, although there was a lot of, Excitement from on my part anyway. I was still saying to myself, "Look, we can win the league." I'm gonna. I'm, I'll always be like that till the day I die. When when August the fourth Saturday in August comes around and Liverpool start, I think Liverpool can win the league. If I don't think it, there's no fucking point in me being there. But yep. it, being like, you know, we're we're being a. When I stop being a sap about it, I kind of say to myself, "Get back into the top four here." Let's build. Now, this is all before the Klopp stuff comes, but let's build on this. Let's get back in the top four. Maybe pick up a trophy. But when you look at the the, the age profile of what's come in here, it's something to build on. And Quanta, Dans, McConnell, Bradley, they've all come in. They've all been excellent. They've all been excellent. But on Quanta himself, Quanta has to limit the fucking comments on his Instagram last night because of abuse he's getting. Now, I'm not saying that's all Liverpool fans. That's just an awful lot of football fans out there that like to just are arseholes. But... As a as a nineteen or twenty year old young fella that's played twenty times for Liverpool, maybe, um, I think he looks at a ridiculous talent, right? A ridiculous talent. I'm gonna say that he makes a mistake, yes, but you shouldn't have to restrict something on social media because you've given a pass and this fella scored from forty eight yards out, right? I think he's yep. been. I think he's he's made a couple of mistakes as a Liverpool player. Everyone makes mistakes. The fella beside him has made mistakes. The fella behind him has made mistakes. The fella to the right has made mistakes. The fella to the right scored an own goal during the week. The fella that usually plays at the right has, gets hammered about his defensive duties and his, yep. his capabilities every week. So, you know, the turn on him and the worst one was that's why you play Canate. Canate couldn't play. So you had to play Quanta. But I have no problem. And if you tell me Quanta's playing on Thursday or Sunday, mm-hmm. I have no problem with it. Or any game between now and the end of the season. That's how good I think he is. But, it goes beyond Liverpool, Phil. Like, and not even in the negative sense. We we spoke and we got given out to him the comments after the show a couple of weeks ago because myself and Kev started talking about Kyrie Mainu off Manchester United during the international break when they were literally 
you know, he was basically the second coming of Glenn Hoddle, you know, mm-hmm. um, in England terms. And we are saying he looks a brilliant talent. He gets a great goal yesterday. Overall, I didn't think he was great, but he gets a great goal. And we are saying during that international break, like, it's impossible. Why is it so impossible to leave these players alone? You know, and and, and be, be mature enough to turn around. Anyone should be mature enough yesterday to turn around, Phil, and say, you know, yeah, he's, he's hit a slack pass. You know what I mean? But in, in, nine times out of ten, he hits that slack pass. Van Dijk gets a yard closer to Fernandez, and we snuff it out, or we, we deal with the break, or, or it goes, whatever happens. That just happened yesterday. But it's not only it's not only Kwanzaa. Bradley's going to get it at some stage. If Dan's comes in and misses a couple of chances, he's going to get it. Kobe Maynard with Manchester United, he's going to get it. Cole Palmer's having a brilliant season at Chelsea. And when it dips, or they fail at something, he's going to get it. He got it after the League Cup final. Where was he? Never seen him. Boom, boom. So it, it's just inherent in what the way things are now, Phil. And you know, it's it, you know, th- there's so many immature people out there when it comes to football opinion. There's so many people out there that give an opinion just to see what the reaction will be. But it's actually starting to spread now. Where you, there's people that you think are, you know, know what they're talking about and have a bit of a balanced mind and. They're jumping on it, and people have hopped on Jarrell Quanta yesterday. Jarrell Quanta wasn't the reason we didn't win that game yesterday. The reason, the bigger reason we win, didn't win that game yesterday was Darwin Nunes, Diaz mm-hmm. to win a, a, a certain. I thought Diaz was probably the best of the front three. Uh, Mo Salah, Sabozloy misses a couple of chances. You know, there was way more reasons than one slack pass. Way more reasons, and and to be fair. If we'd have done our job, he hits that slack pass. Bruno Fernandes kicks that in the goal. And United fans are half cheering because they're 3-1 down instead of 3-0. And you know what? When it comes down to it, I hope the likes of Jarrell Kwanzaa and even Maynou and Cole Parma or whoever these young players are that are coming through, they don't get stifled so, like so many have before them. Because we've seen so many talents, Phil. You know, we've seen so many of them. And then you go, where the fuck is he? 18 months later. Because they've been absolutely eaten up and spat out by the media and by you know people on social media and stuff like that and well, if I'm Jarrell Quanta if I, sorry if I'm Virgil van Dijk if I'm Jürgen Klopp if I'm if I'm McAllister Salah who, whoever I'm saying to Jarrell Quanta don't worry about yesterday don't fucking worry about it you know what I mean yeah. the best player in there one of the best players in our history fell over and cost us a league title your slack pass is done you know what I mean but the way things are in the world now it has to be like Ashley says, LFC fans, in, and she uses the quotation marks there, love a scapegoat. Everyone has to, yeah, you're dead right. Everyone has to, there has to be a target on someone's back. And if Jarrell Quanta didn't make that mistake and Liverpool drew yesterday, I can guarantee you Curtis Jones would have been the one that got it because Curtis Jones, Kobe Mine, who spun away from him. It's just a fucking good goal. And that's the way we are, Phil. That's the way things are. You can't just leave a fella and say, yeah, he made a mistake. But he's not the main reason Liverpool didn't win a game. I know, and, and again, the only reason we're in a title challenge is because of these young players. And I, I, I'm giving a full license here to anyone under 25 is a young player, as far as I'm concerned, of that team, which puts the buzz on that. I've seen criticism of him. Or he's not. He doesn't own games. He doesn't do this. It's the fellas' fourth season in the league. Like people are knocking Alexis McAllister at the start of the year, saying he doesn't fit, he doesn't do this, and doesn't do that. All of a sudden, he hits form the way he's been playing, and he's well regarded as one of the best players in the world. It's a buzz that I look like that at the start of the season. People, players go in, in peaks and troughs. Like they, no one's just a straight line across the course of the season. And when I look at them, they're going, you know, people are, are, are again, and listen, I'm as big a critic when it comes to where I think our centre forwards aren't great when it comes to being clinical in front of goal. Yet, we're the second highest top scorers in the league. So there's, there's, there's a dichotomy here. I think the frustration is that the two lads that are beside Salah are more Salah than they are Mane or Firmino. Does that make sense? So, like, when Mane was was such a clinical finisher when he played for the team, right? So when he was him but and missed, Salah, were but more, missed chances as well, like, yeah, but it didn't doesn't miss the volume of chances. If it, like, what I'm putting, I'm, put, yeah. I'm putting the two boys like Diaz it wastes more chances than Salah does, right? Nunes wastes more chances than Salah does, but they make so many chances. And I think the yeah. frustrate an awful lot of frustration that people have, they're directing it the wrong way. It's you know what the quants do with the pass. Or oh, our strikers are crap. When are they gonna learn how to score goals and stuff like this? It's not it's just about having they just need a bit more composure. And some of that comes with age. Now Diaz is twenty seven, so it's not you know, he's as I said, the, the the beauty we had with Firmino, who wasn't a natural striker, was he was a natural finisher. And I think that was that gets lost at times in terms of what he was able to do when, when in front of goal and given the chances. And he didn't play as a nine. 
Gakpo for me is, is had been that sort of clinical finisher up until the end of January, where his form has dropped off a cliff. But this comes back to my peaks and troughs and another young player. And then you look across that back line and you're saying, Jesus, look at Connor Bradley. Have we really missed Trent? Did we think we'd be sitting here going, you know, we were able to get through this relatively unscathed without Trent? From my point of view, when I look at it, I'm, I'm deeply proud of, of, of what these players have done and what they've been able to maintain despite losing so many talismans for the teams. And the, the laughable bit, the bit that really truly makes me laugh is, I remember at the start of this year, people were calling for Joss's head and saying that he, he doesn't fit anymore, he needs to go and he needs to be gone. And now... He's the savior because he's been out injured for so long, and he's the only finisher that we have there. Yeah, but but the thing, but the thing on Jota is, <laughs> and I uh, I can a hundred percent tell you I was one of them because I think he's the best finisher at the football club, right? And I include Mo Salah in that. Like he is the best finisher at the football club because because Diogo, Diogo Jota doesn't give a fuck how he scores goals. He doesn't aesthetically doesn't care how they look once he wins the fucking goal. Does, do you remember the one at Barmouth where he went to shoe? Was it Barmouth? Went to shoe, hit his leg, went up in the air, he's falling over and just yep. got up and smacked it in the neck. Doesn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? And and he's the saviour now and the reason that's coming up is, is because, and I said it on the show last night, what we were doing in front of the goal there yesterday was a level of poor finishing, which happens. You know, when you get 10 shots on target in a game, you might score three, right? And two of them will be really good finishes and one of them might be a tapping, you know, the sort of way. There's always a few that you go, oh, he's unlucky there with that. He tried to bend it or but that's a really bad miss. I think I think Sabazlai has one where it's a really good save by Anana. I think Sabazlai has one where he's indecisive and doesn't know what to do and puts it wide. I the one where it goes to Diaz, I'm I looked at it back again because I thought it was I thought it was actually wrong after the show last night, but I still maintain that when he's played in there, he takes a touch and he buries it. And trying to give it to to Nunes is like passing the parcel a little bit. And then Nunes should actually reciprocate by going, fuck that, I'm not shooting from there, and tap her into Sobosley, who has a tap in the net. And we were all kind of saying on the show last night, it's a, is it a nervousness? Is it a kind of trying to make doubly sure, oh, he's a bit closer to the goal. Forget the angle, he's a bit close to the goal. They're not dealing the, in, the, in the metrics that they usually do, where, yeah, he might be close to the goal, but he's a tighter angle. I'm... 15 yards from goal, but I can I can score this. And it's a bit like, it's. do you know what? That's where I think the biggest thing out of yesterday comes from. I think if we go and win that game 2 or 3 now, we absolutely fly. Because players mm-hmm. are going, we're scoring, we're running through teams. When I get a chance, I'm going to fucking take it. And and that was the big thing yesterday, with, with the finishing. Poor finishing, yeah. But most of it was, why are you making that decision? You know the sort of way? In a 4 on 2 there, when you get played that ball and you take that touch, defender can't go near you one, and you're in on the keeper. Put it across him, put it across him, and if he saves it, great. You might get a rebound, but for me, that's the biggest thing out of yesterday. It's not what Jarrell Quans have done. It's you know, it's the main new thing could be yeah, it could be avoided. Someone said there earlier we allowed ourselves to get too deep, which is probably fair. But to be to be honest with you, when it comes down to it, the chances we had yesterday. The worrying bit for me was is that it, it was nearly like a lack of confidence. And maybe it's not a lack of confidence, maybe it's a nerves thing, maybe it's a this is what right at the crunch now and these players are brilliant players and some of them have won league titles, you know. Like Nunes is now Nunes is second season in at Liverpool, he hasn't won a title with Liverpool. Either is Diaz. There's a lot of them there that haven't now. There really is, you know, the sort of way. And I'm hoping you know what? If we go to the end of the season and we put as many points on the board as we can and that has gone out of us and we're scoring goals freely and we get beaten by another team for the title, you say fair enough. I'm just hoping I don't get to the end of the season and go, you know what, We the nerves got to us there towards the end. Yeah, up front. Yeah. Yeah. Because, if, because if the nerves don't get to you, Phil, we're winning that game yesterday. We're bouncing into this this weekend and we're, we're basically telling the other teams around us, come on, try catch us now. But Gav, I think what, what gets lost in this, I've seen people write off Salah today because he didn't score any goals yesterday, right? He's the third highest scorer in the Premiership. And he's got nine assists. Uh, could he score more goals? Yeah, but we, this is what Salah's been like for the last five years, right? There's, people were calling him a one-season wonder when he was scoring 30 goals in the second season. Nunes, for all his doubters, and I'm, I'm one of them, and I, I'll, I'll, like I've said it from the very start, right? He's now with double figures in the league. He's got 11 goals in the league, right? He's 31 goal, goal involvements in all competitions this season. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about goals, though. Like he's got 11 goals. He's in the double figures. I think it's a great return for us for, for like what is a really proper season for him in terms of what's there. 
the biggest disappointment remains Diaz. For a fella that gets into so many chances in so many places, right? He, his his return isn't as good enough. When Diogo Jota is still our third highest scorer in the league, right? Given the amount of time he's missed injury, missed players, like that's where our, I, I think. I, and for me, and look, I've I've been on this from I think the day we signed him. I think he's a phenomenal player to watch. I think he's brilliant. He gets you on the edge of the seat, but his return is is nowhere near good enough. And he's not. He as I said, he's in the twenty seven camp. Do you know what I mean? He's he's at the point where he's he is what he is. He's not going to get any better, and he's not going to get any worse. You know what I mean? He's coming to into the peak of his career, and he's not a prolific goal scorer. And I think, unfortunately, in the system and the style that we play with those three at the front, you need all of them scoring goals and putting up double but, figures. But the only thing I would say on that is is that I think the way Liverpool play or played with Salah, Mane, Firmino is completely different to the way Liverpool play with Salah and two others, and including Diaz and that, because I think Diaz stays way, way for wider than Mane. I think Diaz is not encouraged to, you know, you know, because like, let's be honest about it, when Salah had the ball, Mane was a fucking mm-hmm. centre-forward. He was in the middle of the box all the time. At the and end, I, at the end, Gav, if you go no, back... No, at the end, at the end, he's, he's, at the end, he's put through the middle. For the last 10, 12 games of Liverpool career, he actually plays through the middle. He's a centre-forward, mm-hmm. because there might have been an injury um, to Firmino, right? Or for me, you know, I don't know what was going on. Last but, season, it's last season he plays. His last half game. season, he's, he's based through the middle. From what I can remember, last probably dozen games, right? But with Diaz, look, if you look at Diaz and Mane from Mane's fourth season, he was a, a right winger for Liverpool. He was a right winger. Mm-hmm. He was out right, and he was running them up right. And then he goes left when Salah comes in. But what happens is, is that Liverpool basically played with the fella on w- one side has it, the fella in the middle. And the, so Salah has it. The fella in the middle and the fella from the left are in the middle of the box, and it's up to one of our midfielders or our fullback to be that man at the back post sort of thing. It's different now. Even where he receives the ball is different. It's always out wide. It's always on the touchline. But and and maybe his return. If you look at the chances he's had, maybe you could say his return. I think he's got some big goals for Liverpool. In fairness, and it's it's just it's just you know I, I don't really like the comparisons to Manny. It's the same way I don't really like the comparisons with, say, Jota or, or Gakbo to Firmino because they actually don't play the same role. They simply no, don't. No, no, but, but, a different animal. but I'm gonna, I, I, my issue is he has to be in double figures. I don't care where he's playing or what position he is. When you're in, the, in one of those at the three, I'm not I talking think he's about... he's in for all competitions, I think Diaz... No, I'm talking about the league. league. Oh, the Brent league, Moore, okay. Goals. Yeah, okay. League goals, eight goals he has. He's got one yeah. less than Jota. Yeah, he's, scored, he's played in 30 games. Right. That's less. That's less than one... In, yeah. like you're at one and four almost do you know what I mean yeah. and from that position and that place in their team we need a one and two one and two I'd be happy with you know if he was yeah. on 15 goals given the amount of games he's played I'd be delighted I'd be saying he's having a great season I'm happy with that return and I think for the number of chances he gets I think he could be more prolific that's the that's the other bit that I have with yeah him. no I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue that um, he's not the best finisher in the world because he's not I think what he brings to the team is I think is 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 running power his skill is is his um his ability to go by people. Um, I'm, uh, when I look at Diaz, I, I see an awful lot of people going, oh, he might be on the way out. And, and I'm kind of going, well, how do you know? But when I look at him, sorry, <coughs> excuse me. Um, when I look at him, when I look at him, I, it's not so much the, it's not so much the, the, the finishing. Like sometimes what frustrates me with Diaz, and it, it, it's with Salah as well, and Nunez in fairness, um, Jot is probably the one that gets a doesn't kind of f- frustrate me. This is it's the decision making that you make, and what I even mean I don't even mean by you should have went this way with the shot or that way. It's the put the ball in that area for your mate. You know what I mean? When you beat a fella, put it across into a certain area, put a certain type of ball in. And sometimes I don't see that. Like when you put Salah forty yards from goal and ask him to hit a ball with the outside of his foot into someone's path, he's ridiculous at it. But there's mm-hmm. times when I see Salah go onto his right foot and I'm kind of going, just stand her up at the back post. And it's it doesn't really happen. And, and we're probably nitpicking. We probably are nitpicking. But when it comes to Diaz, I think I love him. I, I love I love the reason I love him is, is because I think he's something different to what we have in, in, in those positions. I don't think any, I don't think anyone carries the ball like he does. Uh, no, and, but, and I don't think he, he, I don't think I don't think anyone else attracts players to him like he does, and I think maybe just that that final ball, whether that's a shot or whether that's a cross, yes, could possibly be walked on and improved. I, again, as I said, I'm not like 
and you can't compare the two in terms of what's there right and like for me i don't think and this is in the best possible um way it does because it's not meant as a slight but for me Jossa doesn't do much bar score goals right and i like that about oh yeah oh, his oh, movement is brilliant right he's not going to he's not going to pop up but like when he's given you nine goals out of 20 games which is almost one and two it comes back to what i'm saying to you with diaz if diaz had got us one and two i'd be i'm telling you i'm sitting here and i'm going this fella for, for the amount of involvement and the amount of positions and chances he gets into i just think he could get more and this is this when i go back to what i was saying the overall point about the young fellas and the young and the younger players that are that people are looking at saying nah, 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 and saying like actually look at the look at the experience fellas who's doing their job efficiently and effectively Salah is Salah. He's doing what he's always doing. He's scoring goals and he's making goals. That's what he does, right? Just in, in the league alone, it's 25. I'll give you your 25 goal involvement. That's 17 goals and, and eight assists, right? That's a, 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 a mad return given he was out with the hamstring injury for most of the end of January and most of February as well, right? Um, Nunes couldn't score in a barn for the first four months of the year. And since January, he's suddenly remembered how to score. And, it's fin- and I think it's great. And it was just so disappointed he didn't manage to score on sunday because i think something like that you know a big goal you know yeah. what i'm talking about like a, a yeah. big big goal like i think the of... newcastle i think the newcastle thing earlier in the season held them two goals yeah. off the bench you know when he, he... i, I want to see i want to see him crack past the fella in classic torres fashion in a game just burst past the fella and just hammer it into the roof of the net you know like even if it's against spores or something like that just a really important game for us that suddenly takes his mind up takes, takes all that pressure off his own head internally and he just becomes much more consistent. Um, but while saying that, he's eleven goals. I'm delighted with that. I think he's doing. I think he's he's developing. When you look at what we've paid for him and the, all the stuff that goes on, and then they look at German um, Regen Haaland that plays for United. Right? He's like, imagine if you could get a player that sounds a bit like Haaland, but isn't, and sort of looks a bit like him, but isn't him yeah, but and doesn't the, score but, as many but, goals. But what the one the one thing I'd say on on him is on Hoyland at uh, uh, United is he. He actually reminds me a lot of Darwin Nunes, not in the way he plays, but I think in the circumstances he's in. I think he com- he's coming to he's coming to United team very similar to the way D or Nunes comes into a Liverpool team that are struggling. They're they're about to struggle badly, um, and they do in that in his fourth season. And I think he 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 grows with it. And I think Hoyland has grown. Now he's off form a little bit in the last while, but I think he was starting to grow. And I think he might have had six goals in six games at one stage, but he. My only worry for him is that he's at Manchester United. I think I think if you've seen him at, a, I was going to say Chelsea, but that's not true. If you've seen him at Sports, right, mm-hmm. or you've seen him at even Man City, or um, you know, or a Newcastle or, or something like that, where you go, they're building, and you know, he'll he'll get used to what they're doing and stuff like that. My only worry, you know, is that he just gets pigeonholed into you're a really fast fella that can run through the middle, and we're not bothered with you on any other way. And he's literally living off scraps, that fella. He's absolutely living off scraps, but. I, I don't like to be too guess hard. What? Well, guess what? Well, <laughs> don't care. I know you don't. I know you don't. But 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 just back on just but just back on Diaz. I think, um, you know, someone said there. You have to remember he, the whole thing over his dad and the kidnapping and all sorts of messing that was going on at the start of the season as well. He had all that. I think he's been really good, Diaz. I think he's been really good. I think the I think the thing that he scores as well. Remember, he scores yesterday. Um. And, you know, he's got big goals this season. He has got big goals. I think the one that's going against him is probably the couple of misses against Man City um, in that draw. But overall, um, he's definitely looked livelier than mm. most of them for me in the last couple of months. And you know what? I wouldn't be I wouldn't be um I wouldn't be I wouldn't be rushing to judge on him till the end of the season because my I wouldn't put a past Diaz to get, you know, five and seven. In the next seven league games, you go fuck me. There were five big goals he got, or in the Europa League. So I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't be too quick to um, to to judge on him. And like I said, look, the, we're being linked to a new manager, and I don't really want to talk about it. But you know, <coughs> you know, he come it, apparently the fella that's coming, or rumored to be coming, is from part coming from Portugal, and will know Luis Diaz very well, and and stuff like that. So you know, my head doesn't like him. Said we went out for dinner one night and. He didn't uh, pay said, said, I'm not paying, you pay for it, and walked out. And that's it. it said, I'll never have so him paying. He'll be sold. Um, yeah. yeah, but look, uh, look, I think he was I think he was absolutely great last night. Yes, he did. He was the best of the front three. My only mark against him is you take that shot on. 
when he's when, when we have the break and don't give yeah. it to Darwin Nunes. That's my only thing against him. And I think overall, I haven't looked at Luis Diaz in the last little while and went, ah, you know what? Luis Diaz, no, he's not for me. I've actually been looking at him and going, he's probably looking the most likely out of them all. He's committing players. He's going by players. He's getting a couple of goals. Um, we need a couple more doing that like that. And he's not afraid to have a pop either, which I'm fucking a big fan of because we prick around enough in front of the goal um, in the last little while. That's fair enough. Uh, now, Gav, right, because mm. we're coming up to quarter to 11, I think that was a good chat about what's going on in terms of this. I mean, we're not allowed to talk about Ruben Amorim. Isn't that, that's who everyone thinks is, is going to be the next manager. Yeah, well, let me put it into context for you. Um, there was a fella tweeted out yesterday that Liverpool have uh, targeted Ruben Amorim. Um, they haven't had any discussions with Sporting Lisbon. Um, they haven't really got any discussions with him, but they're hopeful to get this deal done. And then I think the same person um, tweeted today to say, yeah, everything's agreed between Amorim and Liverpool. They just have to go to Sport Lisbon and sort it out. So they must have rang him overnight and went, yeah, what's the story? And he went, yeah. So that's the sort of stuff you're up against um, at the minute. That, like, and, and I'll say, and listen, nothing against Ruben Amorim. I know fucking nothing about him. I've never watched Sport in Lisbon underneath him or, or, you know, under his tenure. I've genuinely never watched Sport in Lisbon play a game of football right unless they played Liverpool at some stage I haven't watched Ruben Amorim manage a single game of football I know fucking nothing about him the vast majority know nothing about him but they pretend to and I'll say it before and I'll say it again I don't give a bollocks about Ruben Amorim I give a bollocks about Jurgen Klopp don't care. and this team I don't, I don't care. care I don't okay. I don't care until they aren't giving out they aren't giving out tomorrow but I don't care until Jurgen Klopp has finished and seen it was time at Liverpool and then we can start discussing the manager. That's how I, that's where I am on it. And people are giving out, why aren't you having chats around room and Amram? Why? Well, there's bigger things to be worrying about. I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into it. Anyway. No, best no, look, best listen, listen, to the best manager's job. And the only thing I'll say when whoever takes it over is I wouldn't like to be it. And I, I mean that in the nicest possible way because to be the man after the man generally doesn't work out. Right? So I'm just, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope he takes it off and, and the whole lot. But it's so rare that the man after their man is ever the man again, right? Mm-hmm. That's just it's just the way it is, and it's because there's yeah. so much that, that, that's there. And um, and play, but by the way, fair play to Liverpool Football Club. If they're sorting this out and they have a target and they're getting the target and they're doing it now and it's mid-April and he'd be well in place for June the fourth or whatever it might be. Fair play to them, but yeah. we shouldn't be bothered by all this. We've we've literally no. twelve games max left with Jurgen Klopp, and everything mm-hmm. should be put into that. And Ruben Amram can wait. And if he he's the manager in the fourth of June, well, I'll be I'll row in all behind him and I'll try to learn much as I can about him. But until then, and while well, Jurgen Klopp is the manager of Liverpool Football Club, I don't yep. care about anybody else. I completely agree with you in terms of what it is. Will I read the rumours? Of course I will. Will I talk about the rumours? Not until we've got nothing to talk about with an international break. We've we've had a, a week of football, so there's bound to be six international breaks to go ahead of us in, in the next two days or something like that. So, uh, but let's let's all. We'll have a chat about it when, when it's time to have a chat about it. Anyway, yeah. more to the point and leading on from this, Gav. Poor old Joe Kinnear died. Are you? 77, I think he was. 77. Um, well respected. Unfortunately, he managed everything, but probably better now for his time at Wimbledon. He didn't manage everything. What? He didn't he did. manage everything. He did. He did. bollocks manage everything. He did, so. Joe Kinnear didn't manage everything. Joe Royal did. did. <laughs> no, Joe did. Didn't. No, he didn't. He did. He didn't. Joe, 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 Joe Kinnear managed Wimbledon for years, and then ended up at Newcastle, and then he ended up as director of football at Newcastle. Do you remember? Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was Good thing to Joe Royal. Yeah. Yeah. Not him. Yeah, it's not Joe him. Not... I don't Joe, uh, Joe Kinnear, manager no. of the crazy gang. No. I don't care now. <laughs> So if you don't care, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, genuinely, I, I actually do because I love Joe Kinnear, right? And I remember um, when he was managing Wimbledon, and I remember there was a lot of talk at the time, particularly for Irish people, right? Um, there was a lot of talk of him getting the Ireland job, maybe on three or four different occasions when he was still relevant to English football and what was going on, and yeah. sort of encapsulated an awful lot of the methods that had um, Jack Charlton had put in place as the Irish team, but hadn't modernised them as much as say. Kinnear had done when he was with Wimbledon and that's what was going on but like from my point of view he he was great for the sound bites there was a bit about him right and he he, he wasn't he wasn't afraid to share his mind 
and this is when the Premier League had really just started to blossom into the Premier League and Sky had come on the thing. So I, I totally dig where you're coming from, even though I thought well, it was Joe Royal. Well, yeah, you thought it was Joe Royal, um, but it's Joe Kinnear. Um, and Tom <laughs> Bowling says there, Kinnear and the crazy gang, legendary stuff. Um, do you know what it got me thinking? And like, you know, um, he's done an awful lot in football, Joe Kinnear. I think he gets, I think he gets a really rough end of the stick at, at Newcastle. Um, where these, where there's all sorts of messing going on there, and he ends up being the face of it all, and um, it was it was ridiculous, um, and it got me thinking about characters in the game, because I think the whole game's just gone so fucking sterile now, you know it's so, you know, and and do you know what I I don't even think it's the manager's fault or the people's fault. I think it's the, I think it's the, the requests that are put across them. Like, you're doing an interview for this, you're doing an interview for that, you're doing a press conference for this, a press conference for that. Then you finish your press conference, can you go in and speak to the written media and do another fucking press conference with them? And then, and it's like, they're just being, not brainwashed, but just, their, their brain is being switched off, you know? Yeah. And Klopp, Klopp has even made a, a, a big thing about this when, when he's saying he's leaving Liverpool. Like he won't miss all the fucking questions and all the interviews and the and the press conference and stuff like that and i think this is a huge reason why i think the game has become so so sterile in in with regards to characters now there's obvious ones out there you know like kevin keegan and the rant mad stuff right um you know you had um red nap like remember red nap at, at every transfer window the final day of every transfer window but i was actually um i was just to a podcast a couple of days ago and it's from years ago right um it's from years ago, and it's I, I was I, I was actually thinking today. Who, so it was it was a podcast I listened to, and I still listen. Go back and listen to the to the things, and um, just to talk about characters in the game. Right, it was Ray Parler. Sorry, Ray Parler was doing a a thing with Jimmy Bullard. It's gone back years ago, right? But he was saying um, how he got fucked out of the England squad by Glenn Hoddle because of a joke he made about. Do you remember Glenn Hoddle had the had the faith healer? Or Irene Drury, mm-hmm. do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, was yeah. saying, so basically, Ray Parler goes up into, uh, Ray Parler's in the in the physio room with your man from Arsenal, who was the physio at Arsenal. Um, I can't remember his name. He was the physio at Arsenal and the physio at England, right? He actually broke his ankle. Do you remember one time he slipped at one of the games in England, broke his ankle? But anyway, he's in the physio room and he says, what's going on? He says, oh, me fucking, me, me, me calf feels a bit tight, you know? And Hoddle comes into the room and says to him, What's going on? He goes, ah, boss, just a bit of a calf strain. You know, he says, listen, he says, all right, fair enough. He said, would you not come up and meet, go up and talk to me faith healer about it? So he was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so he goes up to the room, you know, and the woman, Irene Drury, comes out and says, sit down there. And she starts fucking, you know, rubbing his head and fucking doing all this. And he, and he says to Irene and Drury, oh, here, Irene, a short back and sides while you're there. Right? Messing, right? Of course, this spreads down to her, her husband, who goes it goes on to agents and of course Glenn Hoddle fucks him out of the England squad, right? And Wenger gets on to Hoddle. Now you have to remember Ray Parler at this stage is Arsenal's player of the year, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the most successful at the times, right? Um the, Lewin was your man's name, Paul Gormier, right? Lewin um was the was the physio. So Ray Lewin. Yeah, yeah, I think it might have been, right? So he gets on he gets yeah. on he gets on to he gets he gets on to um he gets on to Huddle and he says to Huddle, What's going on? Ray isn't in the fucking squad. Wenger comes back to Parler and says, You better hope that fucker gets sacked. He says, You're being you're being left out, um, you disrespected Glenn Huddle's faith. Right? So anyway, they're talking about this, right? And then he comes <laughs> so he says, Well, was there much difference there between what well, what was it like when, when Huddle went and, and Keegan took over? And he says <laughs> they used to go away, he said we'd have a double header, right? You might have Moldova and Georgia or whatever, right? And he said Keegan every morning, right, get us down into the room. He said there'd be a load of racing posts in the room, right? Right, lads, are we doing a f- come on, we do a lucky 15 today. Who wants a place, Pop? Do you want to do a reverse forecast? Do we watching all the fucking horse racing, right? Before and after training, like just all gambling, having the fucking crack, right? <laughs> but Keegan, Keegan set up a race night, right? And set up a race night, but Sheringham and, and Shearer used to be the bookies. Right, taking the money five to one, give you an early price on this one before the tape goes in. Keegan goes up into the fucking video room, gets the tape, looks at the first race, and he says, Boys, number five, number five in this race said, It's ten to one. He said, Lash a load of money on it, we clear fucking we clear these two boys over. So he goes up, give us the early price on number five. Yeah, ten to one, right, go on, give us he said those lads bringing thousands into the room. 
<laughs> right? And they were all betting on and Keegan's there to fucking. So he said the race goes off on the video. And he said Kevin Keegan's running around the room with a stick as if he's on a horse. Go on, get up out of it. He's fucking tearing around the room, right? He said, this is the international manager of England after Huddle. And he's fucking whipping himself like he's a horse. He says, here he comes now, boys. And the horse comes around and wins. Of course, he told Shearer and Sheringham afterwards. It was a wind-up, you know, got the money back. But he said, that was the difference. He said Hoddle was going on like he'd a fate healer. And if you didn't, if you said that in tour, he dropped you from the squad. And Kevin Keegan has just fucking gambling thousands on the international break. He said, we done nothing on tactics. He, he used to get the boys and he used to say to the boys, listen, go out, enjoy ourselves, play as a game and do your best. And that'd be it. And he'd send them out to fucking play. And we're missing people like that, Phil. And I know the game is multi-billion pounds now. I know every point counts. Every fucking word that comes out of our mouth is analysed within an inch of its life. But we need more people like this, Phil. We need the Joe Kinnears. We need the, we need the Keegans. We need more of them. But you're never going to get it anymore because the not only not only is there no characters in the management side, right? As I was saying to you before, I had Colin Wanker. You're like, who's Colin Wanker? I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Neil War- it's, it's, it's the anagram of Neil Warnock. That's what he was known as, right? So it was like, but, sorry, like, just a Neil Warnock, right? Yeah, I'm nearly sure, and I, and someone will confirm this in the chat. I'm nearly sure Neil Warnock rocked up at Aberdeen about six weeks ago. And he said to him, what are you doing here? And he went, I've taken this job. I've always managed, wanted to manage in Scotland. And Aberdeen job come up. It was too much to turn down. He's about 80 now, Neil Warnock, right? And he went, fair play to you. And I'm nearly sure after about four weeks of seeing, he doesn't manage Aberdeen anymore. No, but did he no. literally go for a, did he get, does the mate here has a fucking was, caravan up there? And just, you know, he was an interim manager up there. Absolutely says, mad. Interim manager, 16 clubs, but like he was the most unlikable human in life. And then it seemed to where they do actual interviews with him. Do you remember when he was out of a job and he was riding around the track there? He was so personable. He'd come across yeah. as like this mad fella, and he's like, You can imagine him as the manager, you'd be just breaking your heart, laughing all the time, and you'd be doing all the mad stuff that goes on. Um, on Joe Kinnear, though, I, I completely forgot about that whole period when he was director of football at Newcastle, and he more or less appointed himself as director of football, at Newcastle. yeah, because they were all over the shop. He was the manager, yeah. and then and he was the manager and he, he seemed to constantly end up having his hair kept getting longer and getting more kind of more gel in it as it went yeah. on it was mad looking like like Rory says there his wiki page says Al Shabab in 1983 India between 84 and 87 Nepal between 87 and 99 gets into Doncaster in 1989 and then moves to Wimbledon in 92 like that <laughs> joke how the fuck is joking here going around Al Shabab India and Nepal and ends up back at Doncaster like that's a proper fucking that's a character, you know. But clearly the whole war the whole Kinnear at that point and like he literally um is diagnosed with vascular dementia afterwards, yeah. right? But I think half the half the laugh we had at the time was like he seemed to be just doing mad stuff. Like it was when I was looking up, he was like he was playing <coughs> so Dean Holdsworth for fifty grand when he paid six hundred and fifty grand for him, right? But, Does nobody know no, what was going on? He the one that called all the Newcastle name players with the wrong names. Yeah, yeah. He signed Tim Krill, even though Graeme Sooners had signed Tim Krill. He was he said he got John Harrison a free but paid seven and a half million for him. Like there was there was he, he, he literally had no idea who half the players he was were. Calling, like, he wasn't he get... calling Shola Amiobi Shola and Bobobi or he was fucking had yeah, it all yeah. over the place. Called him on Derek Lambie, yes, the fellow he replaced is Derek Lambesi. It's all there. It's, it's like to be fair, it, it's really but clearly if he resigns in twenty fourteen and it's then announced in twenty fifteen now, as much as we thought it was funny at the time, that was clearly the onset of what was going on there. Yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't oh, too- definitely, because he, he was making that many mistakes with what he was saying to people. You were, yeah. you were either thinking, like, is is Newcastle actually just frazzled his head, or is there something wrong with him? And it turns out there was something wrong with him. And it's a, it's a horrible, like, dementia is... It's, it's, a, it's a disgusting yeah. disease. You know what I mean? Yeah. But another name's being thrown in there, Darren, Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway was fucking. Holloway was great. Yeah, Holloway was great. Bad. You know, and and the, the, it's just characters like that, and uh, that's why even I love, Steve Bruce, even Steve Bruce. Ah, well, Steve Bruce, um, like he wrote the books. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's just phenomenal. Are, we, are you going to get your man on? Who? The next thing, remember the fellow I told you about? And because we're talking about Steve Bruce, right? Just so everyone knows. So anyway, well, I won't name. I will name. I, I name it because it's uh, for anyone because you're all into football, and I think is you should definitely. Definitely get on this podcast, right? Because if you aren't on it, you're missing oh, out. Right, go on. 
What was it again? Yeah, it's, it's coming back to me now. It's it's called the Upshot, right? right? It's done by BBC. It's brilliant, but they do like they, they've done mad stuff. Like they they basically cover off the madness in football. So they've done Ronaldinho's life. They've done um lots and lots but they done a special on steve bruce and they actually reviewed all his books in detail gav and the fella that they had on is the fellow i want to bring on here okay is, is the fella. he's 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 a, a literally literary journalist he's read all three books and found them very hard to get hold of but he knows the stories inside and out right he knows right. them all we have to get him on we have but to get because i want to break down on these books i really really do because it cost you about 800 oh. quid a copy uh oh. archie Dillon says clough was mad no clough was a prick Right, let's have it straight. Clough was a prick. And if you want any any evidence on how Clough was a prick, go and look at his reaction to what happens at Hillsborough and then come back and tell me if you have any respect for Brian Clough. End of story. I'm not going any further away. In. Phil Brown. Remember he had all the players on the pitch at City when they were four and a half time. For me, there's, 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 there's a bridge between funny and character and just an arsehole really that was found out towards the end phil brown falls into that one martin allen falls into that one in terms of like there are all these mad managers mad mad managers but then you actually find out their methods and all were absolutely terrible do, do you know who was mad phil do you know who was fucking bananas uh paolo the canio was bananas yeah. no he paolo was bananas immense. Yeah, he, he was bananas. Uh, Roddy Collins is on. Oh, oh, listen, Roddy is just off the charts, Matt. Like Roddy at Carlisle is. And that's, uh, <laughs> it's that fucking is mad. Like, do you remember he that's came back to Ireland then and, and, and he had a uh, Dublin City and he brought um, Carlton Palmer over to play. Yep. Just brought him over and said, come on over here and play, Carlton. And he was like, what's going on? Come he probably told, on, yeah, he, he on, probably told on, Carlton, Carlton this is going to be like the second biggest league in the world by the time yeah. I finish. Right? It was Tell absolutely the Someone's throwing in Tony Pulis. Like that Tony Pulis, when you think of it now, was is mental. Just pure mental. It's all mad. But the thing, but the thing about Tony Pulis was like his football was horrendous, right? But it, he got some results. Hmm? Like he got some results. He beat some big teams. Like they were always awkward to play. Uh, Emmett says Holloway comparing win to pulling women in nightclubs. Some weeks you get nice ones, other ones you get ugly ones, but either way you're happy going home. Yeah, that so was there. Yeah, there's like uh, there's there is, but yes, to your point, there's very few because they're so uh, all of them now are so media trained. That's what I was saying to you before. Klopp is one of the last real personalities, right? Where it's not like he's prepared to say, and we had this a few weeks ago. What's he, what's he actually going to say before the season's out? Because he's yeah. but he's always been he's always been one that's prepared to say what's on his mind. And if he had a viewpoint, he was prepared to give the viewpoint. Yeah. And but it's very different. The the true fellas who are laughing and joking and and and, and all. There's not many of them. They've got. They all went. They ended up in the Roy Hodgson school of. Um, yeah, they're all being media, media. trained for an inch of their lives now. Like oh, LFC not... Monty, LFC Monty says Tony Pulis's rant at James B was possibly the funniest story I've ever heard in football. Now that rings a bell with me, but LFC Monty, like, where can I find that? Can I type that in and find that in, in Google or in YouTube? Sure you better, yeah. Um, Alan Pardew, head button, David Moyler, or. Remember, he, he stitched him a loaf that was bleeding mad. Um, Alan Pardew was tapped, right? Tapped, yeah. Alan Pardew was mad. Um, uh, but it's just, it's, it's just people you can relate to. Like, oh, do you know, when I like, I don't feel sorry for him because it was fucking stupid what he done, but I always liked Ron Atkinson because he was bananas <laughs> as well. Like, he was bananas in stuff he done. Do you know what I mean? And and you remember when, when Ron Atkinson when the when the mic was left on and he fucking I think he said something about Marcel Desai at the time. Now Ron Atkinson famously was known for bringing um, a couple of black players to West Brom, um, and they these two fellas got awful abuse. And Rock, Ron Atkinson was like, "No, they're playing for me." End the fucking story. Um, but it, look, he 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 makes a huge mistake. What he does is completely wrong. But he does it in an era where we're just about to take off with you know. Everyone knows everything within seconds, and he was never, never coming back um, from that. No, but I like, like again, the problem you have, right? The problem you have is that all the fun things, all the stuff that it just everything is tarnished with the same brush, and and, and that's the way it goes. And yeah. the, the, like in terms of this, but like I think the problem we really have, Gav, is is that it's so twi- it's so in your face it's so constant and it's so skyified i can't think of a diff- different word to call it that it just doesn't lend to people having personalities right because people don't want to be caught up in the middle of the next storm and what you're missing is 
what you're missing is is the is the like the Italian. There's still mad Italian coaches, right? Because Italy is still mad, right? Oh, still it's still mad stuff, mad. yeah, it's right? bizarre. It's still bananas, place. right? And South America will have fellas as well who are probably chasing other fellas around the pitch and everything like that you just don't get. But you're not going to get it sanitized, and it's never coming back. So it's it's sad. It's sad that as you said, Canary was one of the characters, was part of the crazy gang, um, and it's sad to see. One of them go because we're not going to see fellas like that happen. I think. I, I think. Like. I think. Even put Mourinho in that in that sort of character. He was a character, Mourinho, um, and I think actually, you know, when they say the game's passed your boy and they look at tactics and stuff like that, I actually think the way the game has gone, as mm. kind of in in a media sense, I think has passed Mourinho boy as well. I think he might be one of the last of that generation. You know, 2004, I think, is when he comes on the scene. And he might be one of the last. Paul Gormley says this. There's one for you because I'm, I'm a bit stumped on this one. Remember that fella that Spurs had in charge for two matches? That was the spitting image of your man Tackleberry from Police Academy. I'm trying to think who fucking Spurs had in charge. I can't think of Christian Gross. I can think of, uh, was it Juan de Ramos? Was he in charge of Spurs for a little while? Yeah, but Christian Gross wasn't he there? For he was the fellow that was getting the train. Remember, he used to come in and go. I got the train to walk today. Remember, he, he showed the ticket on the. <laughs> yeah, the the, the 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 tube ticket. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna have to see if Paul Gormley will answer us on that one. Um, Cyril Regis is one of the one of those players. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, you're right. It was Cyril Regis. Um, but I just think I just think maybe maybe they were uh, Martin Yall. Martin Yall was, was the fe- no Martin Yall was the fellow with the with the no Martin Yall was there for a good bit, but he was Christian the fellow with Gross, the ticket, wasn't he? No, Christian Gross waved waved the ticket. Was it? hundred percent. He, he All right, waved. Okay. Um, One day Ramos was the was the next coming of the best manager in the world ever, and it was only that. Oh he no, he was a French guy. His name was Santini, or something like that. Says Paul Gormley. Was he um, Jack Santini? Was it? Jeez, I can't remember him as sports manager. But if it was only for two games, like, that's allowed. Um, but yeah, uh, Ron, of course, yeah, a couple of people said there, Ron Atkinson comes out for his fourth game as Tottenham <laughs> Forest manager and just proceeds to sit in the Arsenal dugout instead. <laughs> and he's standing there getting all his pictures taken and all, he's looking at the business. And then they go, Didn't Ron, that happen? Ron, Didn't that happen with George you're over there. George and he Graham. just gets up. No, I remember what I'm happened with George. Uh, 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 no, didn't it happen with George Graham at either Boy Hart Lane or... Uh, no, what Bobby happened with George Graham was, George Graham was Arsenal manager, right? Leaves and goes to, I think he goes to Leeds, right? But he ends up at Spurs, right? And I think there's, a, isn't there a game where fucking the ball goes off the pitch and he picks it up and gives it to the player quick? But it's the opposition player. He, I think he nearly forgets who he's managing, and he fucking throw it down the wing and score. Was that it? Was it? Yeah, I'm nearly sure that happens with with George Graham. I thought George Graham was in the wrong dugout, dugout for his first um, North London derby, or went to go and sit in the wrong dugout, and he said, "Here, you're in the wrong one." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, I know." Jack like, yeah, yeah. Jack Santini, yeah, Spurs manager, tells them four. He literally <laughs> stayed for the first two games of the season and resigned. Jesus, that's com- completely gone out my head. Can't even remember. I must look him up. But um, what was the one we were talking about earlier? Oh, the James Beatty rant. Who was that? Who said that to me? Um, I want to see. Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, I want to see if I can find that. I want to see if I can find that. And Jerry says Santini is actually Tackleberry's twin. I must look that up as well. Jesus, loads to be done here now. Loads of extra, loads of extra work to do after this one. But yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. We know we've we talk football and we talk players, but I just thought after hearing when you hear it's it's a bit like you know when when an actor does and you kind of go ah another one from that era and stuff like that mm. but um it's more when i when i heard about Kinnear, I, I always think of Kinnear the wimbledon this you know i thought the mad team he was fucking he's the link mad. isn't he yeah he's and 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 i always think of all these different characters and i just think the argon out of the game i think klopp is definitely a character um but i think when you look and that's not just me because i'm a liverpool fan i actually think when um when you go when you actually look at everyone else there's not many out there where you go he is a good character, you know. He's there's a bit about him, um, and maybe we get a few through that are retiring from football and, and are recently retired and come on to be managers and stuff like that. And maybe they'll that, that'll change and it swings around a little. But right now, I don't think there's enough in the game. That's that's what mm. I wanted to do. 
Yeah. No, I think it is. A, I think it would be sad to when when it is going out. It's another thing that's gone out of the game. Do you know what I mean? The lack of personality. Like, I even go to players, and it's like it's so rare that we see play, any type of players that don't walk down the same track all the all the time. It's like Tom whenever. Tom, sorry, Tom Bowling says, show idea, shortest manager stints at clubs or maddest ones. We can do that for, or we might do that as a member show at some stage where we just take a list of like mm -hmm. 20 managers that literally lasted no time and what went on and stuff like that. Um, we could do that. Sorry, I was interrupting you. What were you saying? No, no, I was going to say the, um, like, we're, we're not going to see, we're not going to see um, players that we saw before. Like, when is the next Ronaldinho going to appear? Never, as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, because it's all never. about it's all about being a team now. You know, it's yeah. all about having the pieces, the team. Whereas, whereas when you had your Ronaldinhos and you had whatever, they were like just a stand out. Like they were just they were the the head of the team. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's like even even when you look at the like if you look at the the city sides now over the last five ten years, there's been no like he's the messiah. And everyone else around them. It's all about team. If you look at Liverpool after Gerrard, really, there was no Messiah, and every, it was all about team, 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 mm -hmm. team, and that's where it's gone now. So you're losing, you're probably losing those individual players now, um, as well. But maybe it'll come back around. Maybe it'll come back around. Gav, can you see get Leeds Joe on? He was a bit of crack. I was only talking to Joe the other day, um, and we are going to get Joe back on very soon. Um, he's gone through a tough time because Leeds are all over the camp in this championship running. But no, I was only speaking to Joe the other day and I said I said to him, look, Joe, come on. And he was like, Gav, I'm up to me eyes, but we will get it sorted. He's a busy, busy man, but Joe was absolutely sound. I love having him on, even if Leeds aren't in the Premier League, I think he's great. Um, so, um, before we go, our fundraiser, Phil's fundraiser, both the links are in the description. If you can, if you have a tenner and you want to give us a fiver each, please do so. Links are there. If you can't take the links, send them, share them around, and explain to people why you're sharing them. Um, we've mm -hmm. gone over the two thousand mark for air fundraiser, um, and I've sent a thousand to the lighthouse, and I'm just waiting on the fan support and fuel banks to send me the details to send their thousand. I've taken, I will take screenshots of all the transfers so people can see what we've earned and what we've sent but i have to say the lighthouse were blown away to be given a thousand euro um last towards the off friday and um, when i gave it to them because it's just huge to them absolutely monstrous to them your mom was over the fucking mill when i told them it was being sent so um yeah um the boat links are in there football prizes i think their latest prize was up tonight so we'll have a new one there coming soon and as i've said if you're watching and you're interested in playing a golf day on the 28th of June with us, talkingcop1 at gmail.com. Get on to us if you want to play or you want to sponsor. It costs you 100 euro to sponsor a tee box and every penny we make. So we're looking to sponsor 18 tee boxes, which will be 1,800 euro for our charity. So if, you, if yourself you want to do one or your family wants to do one or you have a company or you work for a company or you're fucking residents association whoever it might be if you want to sponsor this your name will go onto one of the tea boxes your name will be on our social media around it as well and that's where we make our money on the, on the golf day the lads turning up and playing is turning up and playing and supporting but that's where we are so talking cop one at gmail.com if you would like to sponsor us with that it is very very difficult this year i'm not gonna lie getting players is difficult getting sponsorships is very difficult we may make very little money out of this golf day but I'm, we're still going to do it whether we have 10 players or 40 players so if you want to play or sponsor talking cop one at gmail.com and we'll um we'll, we'll take our money off you and um, we'll put your name out there on uh, the sponsorship list so that's where we are with that yep well that's that's the, that's what it is and make sure you donate every penny you can um when you can and if you don't if you also want to threaten people to donate money um we wouldn't advocate mm -hmm. that but um do you know what i mean like we're not going to turn the money down either so there you go doesn't really take it um and that's been it though where are we, where are we now um that's been the hour that's been mm -hmm. the show mm -hmm. i've been your host phil that's been my mate gav You've been all the people in the chat. It's been great to see. I can't wait to see what the comments are tomorrow. And by the way, for those who want to put the comments in tomorrow, no, I don't care. He doesn't care. I do read them. You but don't I, care either. I, I know I do. I do. I do reply to a few. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Nah, you, you don't care. You didn't care later on. You, you join my. Don't no, care I don't. Club. I don't care about. I don't care about the the. Um, I don't care about the manager team. Manager. Like like yeah. John said there earlier, can we not do both? Well, I won't. Like I, I'll, I'll, 
I will I will do I will deal with Liverpool as it is in reality right now. You know, yeah, have a wonder about who it's going to be, but like all the attention is getting is beyond the joke for me. But that's mm. each of their own, each of their own. Right, are we he's out of here? We're out of here. Hit that button. Okay, here we go. Tips for the Masters. Tips for the Masters. <laughs>